Hello everybody, you're listening to Alfredonian Etiquette and Chivalry. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Alfredonian Etiquette and Chivalry is actually a broadcast series that reveal and express the principles of Alfredonian Chivalry and Etiquette. They are actually perfected principles of Etiquette and chivalry. It's something that I personally created. It is based on the old Victorian etiquette and chivalry. However, it is filtered and reformatted with the Word of God. You see, so it is all based on the Word of God. It is all based on the truth. It is all based on Christianity. However, it is just like taking something that showcase so much beauty and added so much to the world and then refining it with the word of God you know to create a refined model for a man and a woman you know because the truth of the matter is that good manners and graceful conduct never gets old it's something that should continue and it's something that can be taught should be taught and should be learned so that is actually what this broadcast helps to do. It helps to communicate these principles of sophistication. You see, these principles of high class, the way to conduct oneself in society, and all these little things matter a lot and do a lot in taking someone from one social class to another. You see, the principles that you will learn are going to take you upward and forward it is not enough to increase financially but have the attitude and the mannerisms of the poor or an idiot you see a rich fool does money and injustice you see there is class and class must be learnt sophistication must be learnt it must be taught so that in spite of the fact that you may be prospering in your spirits or you may be prospering financially you also have to have this complete roundabout picture in which the way you portray the way you portray yourself the way you speak the choices of words you speak the way you interact with people it's actually going to help because you know another thing you must keep in mind is that a society that is built on an understanding of good manners would actually work better imagine if you went to a home somewhere in China and the tradition there is for you to take off your shoes before you enter someone's home otherwise it's being disrespectful now you don't know that tradition you do not know that that is the etiquette there so you walk into their home without taking off your shoes because that is how you have always done it wherever you are coming from you see and then you find yourself in a situation where everything that you are going to say to them is coming to them from someone who did not take off their shoes. So they are looking at it as you are antagonistic or you are somebody who um, is not a friend, is not one of them. It does not show camaraderie. And in spite of what people may say about, well, they may understand they are from a different culture. No, there is something difference with the reception that you are going to get if you respect or even know their culture and you abide by it, you see within the limits of you not compromising core beliefs of yours, you see so these are things that you have to understand, people who think that etiquette is old fashioned are actually crazy because you see Etiquette always continues, but the etiquette for some people is different for some other people. But I'm teaching the principles of etiquette for a high class. Most of these principles are long forgotten and should come back. Some of them were never implemented before because they are fresh from the word of God or they are inspired by the spirit. So they also communicate the will of God, but they are showing something new. You see, and it's also brings a feeling and a presentation, a packaging of nobility and class and sophistication that every gentleman and lady should have, you see. So these are things that are very important. 
if you look at um, a common scenario like if you invite someone to eat or dine with you and that person puts their two legs on the desk or sorry on the table you would say that it's bad manners you would know that it's bad manners you will inter- take it as bad manners you see etiquette creates a s- an understanding a framework a set of guidelines for us to know how to conduct ourselves around others and also the consequences of the actions that we make and the way we portray ourselves, our beliefs. It's just like someone inviting you for tea. You have to understand what that means. You see, and what that person serves at tea, you also have to understand what that means. You have to understand what is appropriate, what is not inappropriate. If you are invited to a party, how should you approach you see, also the kind of party, how you would, would you dress? If there's no dress code given, there's still a dress code given. If someone invites you to a party and does not, on the invitation, write a dress code, there is still a dress code given. You can't go there naked. You can't go there wearing wherever you want. You see, but with the understanding of etiquette, you'll be able to assess the kind of event it is and how you will be expected to dress. You see, so these are simple things that we go through on a daily basis even with interviews there are a lot of people who have failed interviews because they do not understand the honor etiquette there are certain people that if you dare to go into their presence with sneakers on as in with tennis shoes on they view it as a sign of disrespect and rightly so for their own reasons you see, you cannot dress a certain way for an interview. You cannot act a certain way. There are certain things that you may not see. And this is um, what you have to understand that goes a long way in assessing character. How does an employer choose A over B when they both have qualifications? You see, there are so many things that come into play. But you see, etiquette can make or break you in so many different areas of life. So the teaching of etiquette and chivalry is very important. Chivalry is much more um, broader and it refers to much more than just etiquette. You see, but the two of them are closely linked. And the two of them, it is understandable why the two of them should be taught together. You see, but etiquette is much more... um, I would say it has to do with a deeper level of character building. It's basically based on character and building of character. And it actually changes the person. Etiquette cannot change the person's heart. Somebody can abide by proper etiquette and be the worst person in the world. It is probable that Adolf Hitler or certain Nazis abided by Setting classic principles of etiquette, just like certain wicked people in history have done that, because it's just based on understanding of what is proper and what is improper to do. You see, so we are talking about proper and improper to do as in um, physical interactions with human beings. We are not talking about um, going into scenes or the history of the person and all that the person have done. What I'm trying to say is that a person can be bad and still um, be dedicated to being bad and abide by etiquette. But chivalry is different because chivalry changes the person. Adolf Hitler may have abided by etiquette, by certain principles of etiquette. And the Nazis probably did. However, chivalry is different because now chivalry will now put you in a position where you actually have to love people and care about people and uplift people. So you will not be able to kill a defenseless person or you will not be able to hurt people, you will not be able to harm people. So you can see that Adolf Hitler, the Nazis and any bad person will fail in that area. You see, etiquette deals with the outward appearance, but chivalry deals with the heart. You see, when you now mix it with Alfredonian etiquette, it now brings the word of God into the person's heart. The Christianity aspect is strong and it is there. So that is something that you have to understand about 
Afredonian etiquette and chivalry as a whole. So this broadcast series is dedicated to telling you about um, some of the principles and sharing some of the principles with you that will all be beneficial to you. Make sure you go to pastoralfred.com and subscribe. That way you will be getting a lot of new content that is added to the site. There is so much added to the site. Make sure you go to the site yourself and subscribe. You will be amazed when you find out what is on the site. So today I would like to talk to you about the lifting power of silence. Let me say that again. The lifting power of silence. You see, you have to understand that people who do not talk too much look wiser than they really are. There is a great power in silence. Let us open our Bibles to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 10 to verse 11. And indeed, ye do it to us all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Watch this. And that ye study to be quiet. Let me say that again. That is in verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That is the King James Version. Now let me read that same portion of the scripture from the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible. And indeed, you already are extending and display your love to all the brethren throughout Macedonia. But we beseech you and earnestly exhort you, brethren, that you excel in this matter more and more. Then verse 11. To make it your ambition and definitely endeavor to live quietly and peacefully. To mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we charged you. Praise the Lord. You see, I've told you that Afredonia Enrique and Chivalry is about character. You see, how to live the Christian way. You see, bringing Christianity into etiquette and Chivalry. And this is an instruction of how to live from Apostle Paul. You see, and one of the things he's saying here, when you look at verse 11, is you should make it your ambition. It should be an ambition. And definitely your endeavor to live quietly and peacefully to mind your own affairs and to work with your own hands as we charge you. You can see the importance of being quiet. The King James Version puts it as, and that you study to be quiet. It is very important to be quiet. Some people cannot control themselves. They love to talk. And they find out later on the dangers of their talking. And sadly enough, most of these people keep talking later on. You see, when you look at the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 Reading from the Amplified Classic Version It says In a multitude of words Transgression is not lacking But he who restrains his lips is prudent You see Remember I told you that people who do not talk too much Look wiser than they really are Yes It is good to be wise And yes you should be wise You see As a matter of fact You have to be wise because you have to become a Christian. And when you become a Christian, you are someone who has been gifted the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ has been given to you. You see, and Christ is made unto you wisdom. So Christ is your wisdom. And it is also instructed to you. You see, in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, that you should study. You see, you have to study so that you should have good success. So it is an instruction for you. When you are a Christian, there is a commitment to studying, reading, and increasing in knowledge. You will see that over and over and over and over again throughout the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament. Study, 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 study. Read, read, read. I wish that you grow in knowledge. Grow in knowledge. Grow in understanding. Grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow, grow, grow. All of that is all over the Bible. So Christianity is one of the belief systems that actually... Puts so much emphasis on learning and increasing the knowledge. We are learners. We are students. You see, we are students of the word of God. We are students of God. You see, so we are in the university of the Holy Spirit and there is no graduation. Each day you keep getting higher depending on how much you learn. You see, it is a course that is actually self-paced. It is up to you to learn as much as you 
want for each day. You see, so it's in your best interest to commit yourself to consciously study and learn and grow each day. Because you will still have to learn whatever you did not learn in the future. And there will always be more to learn. Because there is an infinite depth to God's wisdom. God's wisdom and knowledge is infinite. So there is still more to learn. For all eternity, we will still be learning something new about God. Something amazing. We'll still be finding something new and something exciting and something beautiful and wonderful. The path of the just is as it shining like that, shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. You see, but you have to understand that there is no peak. It is not like we reach the perfect day and we are there and there's nothing above again. No. We will keep on on that path. We are on that upward path always for all eternity. You see, so that is something that you have to understand and you have to be committed to knowledge, especially now. I mean, how much do you really know now? So you need to understand this about Christianity and about the life that we have been called to live. Remember that Alfredonian etiquette is basically teaching a way of life. You know that Christianity is not a way of life. You see, it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, it is the translation of a man from darkness into light. You see, it is the life of Christ in you. It is not a lifestyle. You see, however, you can have a lifestyle that is Christian. And one of the things that Alfredonia educates and Shivery does is that it explores the Christian lifestyle. Now that Christ is in you, the hope of glory, how are you going to live it out? What are the things that you should do? You see, Detailed things that are often going to be common amongst every Christian, in spite of how unique and individual we are. You see, because Afridonian etiquette and chivalry emphasizes individuality, which is something that previous versions of etiquette and chivalry did not emphasize. That is why they actually faded away. You see, because humanity is such that there must be individuality among everyone. Otherwise, everything crumbles or societies or cultures get destroyed. That is the way it has always been. There must be individuality. You see, so that is why Afridunian etiquette and chivalry is based on the word of God and it actually just gives guidelines. It is not a series of commandments on what you must do and what must be proper behavior. It just gives guidelines because you see where there are no guidelines and there are no rules, how can there be anything but chaos? You see, so that is something that you must understand. Anyway, we are talking about the lifting power of silence. You see, it is very important for you to keep quiet. Reading Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 from the King James Version, it says, In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin, but he that refrained his lips is wise. You see, so, you have to learn to be quiet. You have to understand that when you talk too much, when you feel that you have to talk and give your opinion about everything that is said, transgression is not going to be lacking. You see, the more you feel that way, and you express always talking about everything and everybody, you will actually put in seeds of transgression, seeds of sin, that actually are going to be a stumbling block to you in the future, or perhaps even in the present. So it is very important that you take this very seriously. Be a person that is not known to be a talkative. Be a person that is not always talking. Let us look at the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 13. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version. It says, The foolish woman is noisy. She is simple and open to all forms of evil. She willfully and recklessly knows nothing whatsoever of eternal value. You see, let us look at and focus on the first portion of that verse. The foolish woman is noisy. You see, it is foolish to be noisy. If you are a lady of quality or you are a gentleman, you cannot be a noisemaker. You have to be quiet. There is a 
the extension, there is a level of sophistication that being quiet lifts you up to. We are talking about the lifting power of silence. When you are somebody who doesn't always talk, the time you talk, people will keep quiet to listen. But if you are somebody who is always talking and always talking and always talking, what is the point in people keeping quiet to listen since you are always talking? You see, when you observe this, there are people who really speak. When they speak, everybody keeps quiet because they want to know, ah, this person that uh, always keeps quiet, now they are talking, let me hear what they have to say. You see, there is a lifting power of silence. It is not everything that you see that you must talk about. It is not every conversation that takes place that you must join. And even when you join a conversation, have enough class to understand that a very as vital aspect of shivering is giving other people the chance to talk. Giving other people the chance to speak. Not being the most dominant person in the conversation. Other people have opinions to express. You see, it is not for you to think yourself to be the life of the party when nobody wants you to be the life of the party. You see, if you want to be the life of the party, it must be something that is a result of the feedback you are getting. You see, not that you make yourself the life of the party. What you are now is the pest in the party. Don't be somebody who is insensitive to others. Let others add their opinion. And one thing that you must observe is that if you are somebody who maybe some of you have observed it, some of you may not have. And if you are somebody who is always talking, you may not have clearly observed this. But have you ever noticed that there are some times that you say things to people, you are talking. Then later, when they get to speak or you ask them a question relating to something you have already said, it becomes clear to you that they did not understand what you are talking about. You see, two of you are on different pages when it comes to understanding what you are even talking about. Now, if you have spent so much time talking, that is how everything you have said is a complete waste. You see, so this is something that actually you should be conscious of in every conversation. It is not enough to talk. You see, it is good to communicate what you want to say. It is good to express what you want to say. But you also have to understand that that is not the end of the equation. There is the other end of the equation that is the understanding of what you are saying. Is that person understanding what you are saying? You see, if you are speaking French to somebody who cannot understand French and they can only understand English, what is the point of what you are doing? You see, so the other end of the communication is very important. How is the person understanding what you are saying? And that should now determine how you actually communicate and send across the message. You see, and not be somebody that ends up boring people. There are people who are so insensitive to the people they are talking about that they cannot see that the person they are talking to is being bored by the subject matter that they have chosen to talk about. You see, there are so many situations like that. And perhaps you yourself have been bored by somebody. The person just kept talking about something you do not want to talk about. And you are just hoping, God, let this conversation just end. You see, a lot of times it is the other way around, but you do not know that that is how you are making others feel. So you have to be conscious of this, you see, and you should learn to be quiet. This is going to save your life for a lot of you, you see. There are a lot of people who are dead today because of something they said that they should not have said. There are a lot of people who have started wars because something they said escalated into something else, and it just kept on keep escalating until a war was fought and thousands of people or millions of people died because of what somebody said. You see? So, be careful with your words. Learn to be quiet. It is written, if any man offend not in word, he, the same is the perfect man, able also to bridle his whole, whole body. You see? So, do not offend in word. Be careful. Think before you talk. Some people just love to talk. There are people who just want to express themselves. Let me give them a piece of my mind. Don't be that person. You see, don't be that person who is trying to receive awards for 
speaking and being able to insult people, especially a lot of women. A lot of women like to be the one that when they talk, they can insult, they can say things, they, they want to give you a piece of their mind. They are powerful in that area. They, they, they want to give themselves an award in it. There are people who are like, ah, nobody tries me. You see, are they, uh, they, they, they view themselves as invisible in this area. They like to, anytime someone offends them, they just go with words and they just run off with it, saying all kinds of things. Let us look at the book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 9. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible. It says, It is better to dwell in the corner of the house top on a flat oriental roof exposed to all kinds of weather than in a house shared with a nagging, quarrelsome and fault-finding woman. You see, that is the problem with so many people. You cannot be a woman of quality or a gentleman and be someone who is this way. You cannot be this nagging and quarrelsome and fault-finding person. A lot of wives are this way. They are always nagging. They are always quarreling with their husband. They are always nagging their husband, disturbing their husband about one thing or the other. Or comparing their husband with somebody else. You see? And they are always finding faults with their husbands. He has this fault, he has that fault. He has this fault, he has that fault. You see? This scripture is saying it is better to dwell in the corner of a house top on a flat oriental roof exposed to all kinds of weather than in a house shared with a nagging, quarrelsome and fault-finding woman. A lot of people carry this outside the home. And this does not apply to women alone. If some men are this way. They are always nagging. They are always quarreling. Especially a lot of all these young people and those who are into hip-hop and those who are influenced by hip-hop. They are always quarreling with somebody. They are always dissing somebody. To use their phrase, you see. They are always... They will make music and dedicate a song to insulting somebody, one particular person, and it becomes fun to them. You see, this is bad character, and this is the kind of thing that diminishes you and actually reduces you. You're merely doing it. It doesn't matter how great the insults you delivered were. You're, the mere fact that you are this kind of person who does this kind of thing in itself is your defeat. That is what defeats you. That is what has put you down. It doesn't matter the reaction that you get from other people who are as ignorant as you are and are amazed at the insults that you delivered. You have degraded yourself before the wise, before angels and demons, and also before God. And life itself has demoted you, but you don't know it. However, it will be made manifest later. You see, so be a person that is quiet. A person that doesn't talk too much. Always looks wiser than they really are. So imagine you being wise. Then your being quiet now adds on top of your wisdom. You see, I would say it's, it adds to the appearance, you see, because this is based on appearance. It makes you appear wiser than you really are. You see, it doesn't mean that you, but technically you actually are wiser than others who, who are always talking though. You see, you are, you are, you are wiser than those who are always talking. But you see, it also has the added advantage of changing the appearance and adding wisdom to your appearance. You see, you look wise. It adds wisdom to the clothes that are spiritually upon you. What people see when they look at you. You're keeping quiet. You're speaking only when it's necessary. And when you have the principle of when you speak, let it be words of wisdom. Words that are important. And words that uplift, not words that pe bring people down. You see, sometimes even if someone attacks you and just goes on a barrage and just says all kinds of negative things around about, a lot of times it is best to just keep quiet and just give one sentence and walk away. At the end of the day, you look wiser than that person. You see, in the scriptures it is written, answer not a fool in his folly, otherwise <laughs> you look like a fool, just like him. You actually be being a fool, just like him. So, 
understand the lifting power of silence and learn to be quiet. That is it for this episode. There is much to be said, but it will be in entertainment products that I put out in different formats from fiction books to other products that I work on and would release in the future, movies, video games and the like, you see. All the movies, video games, novels and products that I work on, they all have the teachings of Jesus, the wisdom of God, the sermons from the scriptures entwined within the stories, entwined within the messages, you see. Because all true entertainment and forms of storytelling have the ability to communicate the message. But the issue is what kind of message is it and where is the message from? Is the message from God or is it not from God? You see. So just the same way that the parables of Jesus contain messages and sermons that we are still learning from and benefiting from today. In the same way, I make sure all my entertainment products from my entertainment companies are that way also. So make sure you go to pastoralfred.com and subscribe. So when entertainment products that are being worked on or are being published are available, you, you'll be able to get them. You see, it's important that you filter your mind and you are not somebody who is just exposed to what the world puts out there, the entertainment the world puts out there. It's important that you are linked to what someone who is in Christ and someone who is led by the Spirit puts out there, what the Spirit wants you to receive. You see, entertainment that is of eternal value, entertainment that has the mind of God revealed and expressed in it. You see, so make sure you go to pastoralfred.com and subscribe. Also, if you are listening to this broadcast and you've not given your life to Christ before, make sure you go to pastoralfred.com and click on the salvation prayer link. There are prayers there for you to see. After that, I'd like you to join the family. The family is a Christian fellowship that I founded. More details about it is on the site. So that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you.